Okay. Uh, as you can tell by now, Terry's not here this morning. He's uh, sick, so he gave me a call yesterday. He said he really wanted to be here, really wanted to try to be here, but asked me to, if I could to be ready to go in case he wasn't, so here I am. Uh, I titled this morning's lesson, Which Way Do I Go? It's like that old thing, which way do I go, which way do I go? <laughs> Uh, so we're going to lay down a challenge to all of us this morning, the challenge to move forward in our personal walks with Jesus the Christ. Maybe we need spiritual, spiritual shoes like the shoes the ancient Roman soldiers used to wear. Their sandals were designed where they could go forward but had difficulty going backwards. So the whole point of that was to remind them that their are to ever march forward, not backwards, no retreat. We're going to read a few verses from 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 through 8. Uh, now, I have to be careful with this because it goes back a ways. I'm going to be talking a little bit. We're going to be talking about lepers. Uh, several years ago, I was doing an outdoor devotional at Parkman Road. And while I was doing the devotional, all of a sudden, almost everybody started laughing. Felice rolled off her chair. And while I just kept going like a trooper, and I'm trying to figure out what everybody was laughing about, I looked around, there was nothing going on behind me. Was there something about my dress that I didn't know about? And then I realized instead of using the word everywhere, I, instead of saying lepers, I said leapers. <laughs> so I'm going to try not to do that this morning. So let's read from 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 through 8. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why do we sit here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come... And let us go over to the camp of the Arameans. If they spare us, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they arose and at twilight to go to the camp of the Arameans. When they came to the outskirts of the camp of the Arameans, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Arameans to hear a sound of chariots and the sound of horses, even the sound of a great army. So that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel have hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Therefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their donkeys, even the camp just as it was, and fled for their lives. When these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent and ate and drank and carried from there silver and gold and clothes, and went and hid them, and they returned and entered another tent, and carried from there also, and went and hid them. These few verses are not often referred to, and uh, they're like some people would say obscure, but they're not. I mean, everything we're given in the Bible is given to us for a reason, and we have to search out what what is the meaning to us today for that. So the four lepers show us three directions we can possibly take in our spiritual life. Three directions. The first one is retreat. That's in verse 4. They said, if we say we will go into the city, the famine is there, and we will die. One of their options was to go back into the city, but there were serious consequences that awaited them if they did so. They would eventually die of starvation, a long, slow death. If we choose to go backwards in our spiritual life, serious consequences await us as well. We slowly starve ourselves of God's word and provisions, depriving ourselves of God's teachings will act just like food starvation. A long, slow, spiritual death. Famine. 
Nothing can make your life more dry and unfulfilling than going backward spiritually. A spiritual death awaits people who choose to go backwards. This begs the question, how do we retreat or go backwards in our relationship with God? And how can we recognize spiritual retreat so that we can head it off and avoid it altogether? We pick up old sins that we were forgiven of. Maybe we pick up old habits that slowly chip away at our spiritual lives. Going to church regularly is not a priority anymore to so many. If you don't believe this is a big problem, just look around. The second path we can take in our spiritual lives, remain in verses 3 and 4. Remain or stay where you are. Fail to grow. Verse 3, they said to each other, Why stay here until we die? And if we stay here, we will die. They, cho they could have chosen to stay right where they were, but they also would have re it would also have resulted in, in death, in certain death. If we choose to stay right where we are spiritually... We can expect certain spiritual death as well. If we fail to grow, we will die. Here's a little story. Someone gave a sundial to a group of people in the jungle. A sundial. They regarded it as an icon and wanted to keep it holy. So they built a house over it to keep it safe. This, of course, kept the sun away from it. They had rendered it useless by trying to protect it. They honored the sundial, but they made it of no practical use. That's how many people regard Christianity. It has become something they have enclosed within beautiful walls and a cathedral ceiling. But for wor far worse, they also wall off the Christianity from their own individual lives as well. So we have to look at, we've looked at two op options so far. Retreat or remain. Neither of these options are ones we should be striving for. But we are not done yet. There is a third option that we're given here in the story of the lepers. Verses 4 through 8. We'll read that again. Verses 4 through 8. Okay. If we say we will enter the city, then a famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come and let us go over to the camp of the Arameans. If they spare us, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they arose in twilight and went into the camp of the Arameans. And, you know, we read all out to the outskirts. They were trying to weigh what they, what they should be doing. They, they elected to go to the camp of the Arameans. So they elected to run. They elected to move, not retreat, and not just remain where they're at. They took a chance. They took a step of faith. The lepers decided to take a chance and proceed to the camp of the Arameans. What will we find if we take a chance and proceed and move on our spiritual lives? Not to be comfortable where we're at, but always moving forward, always growing. We receive security, we find in verses 5 and 7 of this chapter. The lepers weren't sure what the future would hold when they took the action they did. They weren't sure what was going to happen. But God intervened. God provided for them abundantly because they took that step in faith. God provided for them. It was a, here's a, another little story. It was a dark and stormy night. When a lady on a boat crossing Lake Michigan, the lightning, the thunder, and rain made her very nervous. 
If you ever been out on a boat during a storm, you could understand that. She saw jagged rocks jutting above the surface of the lake as the waves broke across them. In fear, she asked the captain, do you know where all the rocks are out there in the lake? No, the captain said. I don't, but I do know where it is safe. As all of us sail through life, we're going to see lots of rocks out there. Some will know how to avoid. It'll be obvious. Others, it's not that obvious. Others will come upon us as a surprise. The important thing to know is where it is safe. Jesus knows the safe way. Follow him. The good news, God will keep us safe and secure and watch over us if we decide to grow in our faith and take that spiritual walk. I have another illustration. This is entitled, A Touch of His Presence. It is said that Eastern shepherd, shepherds, as he, it is said that the Eastern shepherd, as he brings his sheep back to the fold each night, stands at the door and counts each one. As he does, he puts his hand on the head of each animal. He makes a habit of touching each one of them. If he were to grow careless and neglect to habitually touch his sheep, it would soon turn its head away when it heard his voice. This, of course, could be very serious. For with such a broken habit, would follow the animals actually ignoring the warning shout from the shepherd and subsequently could be disastrous for the sheep. If we are experiencing the shepherd's touch daily in our lives, then we will recognize his voice when he warns of impending danger. This will mean practicing his presence daily. If we do not practice his presence, then we have probably practiced the presence of our enemy. Our Lord awaits the moment to touch our day, each day of our lives. It's a pretty nice quote. It's important that while we proceed in the Lord, that we keep ourselves fed. We read in verse 8 that the lepers found blessings and riches unlike any they ever expected. They didn't know what was going to happen to them when they took that step in faith and went to the camp of the Arameans. But God provided for them, abundantly so. They received more than they ever thought. They would have been happy to find a few crumbs They'd have been happy to be still alive. Our main point this morning is, if we take a chance and surrender to the direction of the Lord, we will find blessings and like, unlike anything we can imagine. So wrapping up this short lesson, all of us have a choice to make. That's what we learn from the story of the lepers in 2 Kings. Our choices to retreat, to remain, or to run. Will you take the chance and surrender and run? Move from where you are in your spiritual quest and move forward in that spiritual quest. How will you choose to do so? If you think, okay, how? We do that in our prayer life, studying the word of God, in our giving, and in our witnessing. Find a place, a niche to respond to the Lord this morning and make your unique move to where God wants you to be. If you retreat, you will never come to know the true grace that God wants to bestow upon you what he wants for your life. If you remain where you are spiritually, 
You will have stymied your growth and your potential. You'll be like a bonsai tree. They look real good, but they never experience their true potential. Or you can run into the arms of Jesus and the Father. They will provide and provide abundantly. All of us need to accept the fact that only the Lord can cause us to grow spiritually. Which way do I go? It's up to each one of us to decide. Do we retreat? Do we remain? Or do we, by faith, run with the Lord? To anyone here this morning who's who has yet to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now is your opportunity. Brian is about to lead us in a song of invitation. That's your opportunity to accept the Lord as your Lord and your Savior, be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and start your walk running with the Lord. Thank you.